Hi everybody, it's Mike, one of the admins from the uh, Facebook Moon Landing Hoax Group. And today I want to talk about Apollo 12 and how the windows of Apollo 12 uh, show evidence of fraud in the Apollo record. Now there's a couple different photos from the Apollo 12 record I want to show you today. Um, here we have Apollo 12 Magazine 50, and we've got uh, photos number 7372 I'm showing you, 7369, and 7367, okay? So I want you to look at these photos here and notice the streaks of water that you can see going down the uh, windows, all right? Now, I'm going to show you an article here in just a moment. See if I can pull it up. Uh, for liquid water in space, okay? So this is a Forbes article. It says, water in space, does it freeze or boil? There are numerous uh, resources you can find to uh, the document, what happens in space to water, it boils. But I figured the easiest way would just be to show you the experiment uh, in this uh, video that they show on the Forbes article. Okay, I'm going to play a piece of it here. Hard to read through the, the glass chamber, but it's about 23, and we're going to try to boil this water at room temperature, about 23 degrees Celsius, by lowering the atmospheric pressure. That's all I'm trying to do here, because we know that boiling is when the atmospheric pressure upward, which is the um, gas molecules escaping into the gas phase, equal the atmospheric pressure pushing down. When those two forces are equal, we get boiling. So when you say the boiling point of water, it can be any temperature. So I'm trying to prove that. So let me turn on the vacuum pump, lower the pressure, and right now this water is evaporating. It is uh, going from a gas, uh, a sub-liquid phase to a gas phase right now. We don't see it because we can't see steam, but it's not boiling because the atmospheric pressure is too large. So we're going to lower the atmospheric pressure right now and I'm pulling out the gas molecules. And once I drive out all the gas molecules, there'll be less molecules to collide with the surface, less force pushing down the surface, and I should achieve uh, a maximum rate of evaporation called boiling. So you can actually see it starting to happen now, and there's our boiling. Now I want you to take careful, uh, look at the temperature of the system. It's actually falling a little bit. And you used to say, well, why is the temperature dropping? We're boiling at 22 degrees Celsius, 21 degrees Celsius. Very interesting. But how can we boil at 21 degrees Celsius? Because boiling is when the atmospheric pressure equals the vapor pressure. And at 21 degrees Celsius, we're producing a low amount of vapor pressure. Well, if I have low force or atmospheric pressure pushing down, you've got boiling. You look carefully, though, the temperature is dropping. The temperature is getting colder. The water is getting colder as it boils. Very strange. Okay. Okay. So basically, what the physics principle here is: what maintains liquid water is air pressure. So uh, on planet Earth, we have uh, an atmosphere that allows liquid water because the uh, pressure of the air allows that to form. Otherwise, we're going to have ice or the water is just going to evaporate into a gas, right? So when I show you the photos of Apollo 12 right here, the question becomes, what are those streaks of water that you see on the windows? Now, for the Apollo missions, the capsule looked something like this. This is Apollo 10. This is a picture from a museum in London where they have the Apollo 10 spacecraft. Now the Apollo 10 craft allegedly just orbited the moon and tested the lunar module. But this is, these are what the windows looked like. You had five of them. You had uh, you know, two on the side and then one in the center right here. Well, they removed the uh, door to the uh, entrance, I guess we would call it, to the uh, command module. This is also the exit that they came from when they uh, splashed down from low Earth orbit, which is uh, the only place this <laughs> command module will ever been. 
Uh, obviously, it did not go to the moon for reasons I've described in a number of other live streams. But this one, I'm focusing on Apollo 12, okay? We don't have the Apollo 12 uh, capsule to photograph, but we do have the Apollo 10 one to show you what it looks like. And the window design is the same, okay? Now, for the uh, this right photo here, you see Apollo 12, uh, magazine 50, uh, 7369. This is the actual door. And uh, to open up the command module spacecraft and exit it. And that was the only window that was circular, like you see here, a little porthole window. But the windows for Apollo 12 were, uh, you know, had these streaks of water. Now, some of the windows must not have had streaks of water because you can see, uh, you know, pictures allegedly what they would do is they would uh, photograph. Uh, you know, Earth while traveling uh, to the moon, and uh, this is ostensibly what Earth looked like, okay? Now, I can show you where all these photos can be found. The easiest place is Flickr.com, by the way. They have all of the Apollo 12 photos. Actually, all the Apollo photos from every mission were uploaded and put onto this Flickr.com website. So it's Flickr.com slash photos slash Project Apollo Archive slash albums. You click Magazine 50 and you can see all of the uh, photos. Now, ostensibly how this was done was the, the photos are taken in sequence, right? So you got 7325, uh, they're in low Earth orbit, and as you can see, uh, the window is absolutely clear, and they're showing the Earth. And then they sh keep sh they show the, the connection with the lunar module. So they go through and they document the alleged record of uh, Apollo 12. Well, what's interesting is you can see right here that, um, you know, there's no uh, water droplets on the windows. We get to here, and they're uh, photographing at least two different windows. We've got the center, uh, you know, uh, hatch with the porthole window, and you can see the water droplets on it. And then you can see one of the side windows, and they have water droplets on, you know, that window as well. So the question becomes, why is there water on the window if, you know, uh, it's supposed to boil in a vacuum, right? So there's two possible other explanations, right? Because one of, it can't be that there's water on the outside of the window, right? Because clearly they're not in uh, the Earth's atmosphere anymore. The prior photos in the sequence establish and prove that, right? So they keep taking photos, photos, photos. Boom, okay, let's switch and let's take a picture of the, um, you know, other windows, I guess, and note that there's water on that. Isn't that interesting? Well, there's two other explanations that could be besides this being water on the exterior of the window. Now, if there's water on the exterior of the window, that would be evidence that the Apollo missions were a hoax because there cannot be, as the experiment shows, in a vacuum, which space is a vacuum, there cannot be liquid water. It's going to boil away. It's either going to be ice crystals, like potentially, I guess you would see in some comets in outer space, uh, or it's going to be a gas. It's going to boil, right? Um, because, uh, and that's actually why astronauts have to wear uh, spacesuits, okay? It's not just a matter of oxygen and maybe keeping warm. Like there's this notion that uh, space, of course, is too cold and uh, you know spacecraft needed to be heated up because there's no uh, you know heat uh, to keep the astronauts warm that's why in the Apollo 13 uh, photo for some uh, photo of the mission you see in the movie Apollo 13 they have the astronauts looking like they're freezing cold on the way to the moon ostensibly um, and you know that's nonsense right you know, the sun provides plenty of heat if you're looking at the sun. And if there's no sun, let's say the earth is in shadow, right? And the sun, uh, the earth is completely blocking out all sunlight. Then 
space is going to be very cold, right? Space doesn't have temperature because there's no air in it, right? Uh, and it's the air that allows uh, human beings to survive because we are liquid uh, creatures, of course. We have blood and the blood needs to be liquid. And in order for the blood to be liquid, you need to have air pressure. So if you put a human out in outer space, uh, what's going to happen is uh, basically their uh, veins are going to explode, right? Uh, their blood is going to boil. So the primary reason you need these uh, spacesuits on the moon, which is a vacuum, and in outer space, which is a vacuum, is because you need to protect the uh, blood and the organs and tissue inside our soft, squishy bodies and allow that to remain in a liquid form. Uh, which is why the uh, cabins are pressurized with air. So, you know, ostensibly they allege that the Apollo capsules were pressurized to about five uh, pounds per square inch of air. And that's what was used to make sure not only that the astronauts could breathe inside the capsule, uh, but also that um, they, uh, you know, their blood didn't boil because if the capsule opened up, it really wouldn't be the lack of air because we could hold our breath for a little while. I mean, obviously we're going to die and suffocate, of course, too. But before that, what really is going to kill us is going to be the uh, uh, boiling of the blood um, in our bodies, right? But, you know, that's interesting. Why is there water outside the window? Well, as I was saying earlier, you know, two possible explanations. <clears throat> One would be that the... Uh, water is inside the window. Well, if you, you know, click the photo and zoom in, I mean, you can see it's clearly outside, right? I mean, you just look at that, it's outside the window, right? It, and, and the question becomes, if it's inside the window, what did they spill inside the spacecraft to cause there to be water on the interior of the window, right? So I'm zooming in, I'm showing you here, what what did they spill inside, right? Well, there's something called, and I've, I've referenced it a number of times, it's called the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal. And the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal is the official record of, you know, what happened in all of the Apollo missions. So uh, you go to uh, hq.nasa.gov slash ALSJ, this is the repository of all the Apollo records, photographs, and video clips that are, uh, you know, on the website in real player. They're managed by private parties, the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal sections for each Apollo mission. And you have Eric M. Jones as the founder, and then uh, Ken Glover is the editor. And uh, one thing I always find funny about the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, and I'm going to mention this on every live stream uh, for the benefit of anybody that hasn't seen my prior live streams, but I always tell people this is the repository of the records on the NASA website. This is where you want to go if you want to get the most information and evidence of the Apollo missions. What does it say? It says the journal is, in Neil Armstrong's words, a, quote, living document and is constantly being modified and updated. Please don't hesitate to let us know about errors. We want to get it right, but sometimes that can take a while. We would like to thank everyone for their help and patience. You may email the editors concerning typos, factual errors, and with general comments at Apollo Lunar Surface Journal at gmail.com. Well, isn't that fascinating, right? This is uh, a page on the NASA.gov website, and it is managed by private parties. They say it's a living document. We can modify and update this at any time, and uh, we can get things wrong, so email us and we'll fix the errors, right? Well, if this is a legacy record, why would they need to change and modify and update this, right? Why is it sent to a Gmail account by private parties that are managing this, right? Uh, why isn't uh, NASA.gov or a NASA uh, e Gmail account, okay, managing this, right? Why isn't there a named actual NASA personnel in control of this? Why is this a legacy section managed by these people? 
Now, um, when you click on the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, you can go to the particular missions like Apollo 12, which I have loaded up right here, and you can look at all of the images and photographs. Magazine 50 is where these uh, particular photos come from. Now, interestingly enough, the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal does not have uh, explanations of each individual photo for Magazine 50 and Apollo 12. Now, you can go to the Project Apollo archives I was showing you earlier uh, on the Flickr.com website where all of these Apollo images are uploaded, and you can see all of them right here, but they only do uh, descriptions for just a couple of the photos. And you can click this one right here, uh, image AS12, magazine 57369. And it says on here, uh, according to National Space Science Data Center document NSSDC 7011, July 1970, this photo shows the fouled hatch window. Streaks go left away from the CMS cone right. The photo was taken inside the command module during the translunar coast, okay? And you can click it, and then here's the photo right here, what it looks like. Color's a little bit off but, uh, compared to the one I got from the Flickr website, but you can still see the streaks going through the window, and you can see clearly they are outside the window. And if they were inside the window, why in the official record does not reference what they spilled, okay? Uh, we know in Apollo 16, you know, they spilled some orange juice and got it on, uh, I guess, the uh, uh, glass piece that they use in the Hasselblad cameras, which caused there to be spots on some of the Apollo 16 photography, right? And they describe that in the record. Well, why aren't they talking about why uh, they spilled something on the inside of the spacecraft to cause the uh, windows to have streaks on it like this on the inside. Clearly on the outside, if they're outside and that's liquid water, which it doesn't look like ice or anything, it looks like liquid water on their droplets, well then that's not possible because the uh, water should uh, boil in the vacuum of outer space. And as I referenced before, we can see by the sequence of the photography that they are not uh, in the atmosphere of Earth. They've gone uh, outside low Earth orbit. They're blasting away from Earth, uh, at least allegedly according to the record. And then they pan the camera and they take a picture and they show these uh, streaks, okay? Well, what's another possibility? We had a troll in our Facebook group uh, that I, uh, you know, dealt with, I guess, earlier in the year, and that troll claimed, well, what we're looking at here is water, they call it outgassing, that's in between the two panes of the windows, right? And interestingly enough, that troll on our group, uh, you know, and, and the reason I call them trolls is they're attacking us in bad faith, right? So somebody in good faith will say, hey guys, you know, it's interesting what you guys are talking about. Uh, here's where you might be wrong. Let's talk about it. But what a troll does is say, you guys are idiots, right? Here's a document that shows you fools are wrong, right? The uh, water was trapped in between the window pane. They call it outgassing, right? So that's what this troll tried to say and linked us to a document which we found fascinating because all it did was further prove that we're correct when we question, you know, what this water is, right? So let's go back um, to uh, the document, okay? So this is a conversation I had December 11th, 2021, and uh, in it I have the document and uh, here it is on uh, N trs.nasa.gov. The document in question he linked to is a NASA technical note here. We have it listed and uh, it says here in the abstract of this report. Now importantly, okay, I want to reference that this report is dated March 1972, okay? 
when was the Apollo 12 mission? Well, we can go to solarsystem.nasa.gov and from the official uh, NASA webpage, it says it was launched November 14, 1969. Uh, it was recovered on Earth November 24, 1969. Okay, and that's important because this report is dated March 1972. What does it say? It says the problem of the window contamination in the Apollo command module is reviewed. So when they say contamination, ostensibly they're referring to the windows and water, they call it outgassing, uh, you know, between the window panes, which makes it difficult to look through the windows. All five command, command module windows were contaminated while in Earth orbit on the first three manned Apollo flights. The con contamination sources were identified and eliminated. Pre-flight testing of the lunar module windows showed that no serious uh, contamination should occur, and this conclusion was verified, this is important, verified in subsequent manned flights. In this report, the command module window designs and material are described. The window contamination sources are identified, and the in-flight and chemical analyses of the contamination are outlined. The corrective actions that were taken are reviewed. For the lunar module, the window design and materials and pre-flight and flight evaluations are described. The window design recommendations are made, okay? So the Apollo missions, as we all know, were, uh, you know, uh, from 1969 through 1972. Uh, this report is made after Apollo 12, and it references that there was a problem on the first three manned Apollo flights of uh, an issue of contamination in the windows, which is what this report is all about, okay? The problem with that, right, is when we look at all of the different Apollo missions, and again, I'm going to nasa.gov, you know, from the horse's mouth here and what they say about the missions, well, what were the Apollo manned missions? Okay, they outlined them here. You got Apollo 1. We won't uh, count that because these three astronauts were killed in a fire during the test in the command module on Earth. I'll do a separate live stream on that one because that's a huge can of worms we can get into. Uh, a lot of people believe that these astronauts were intentionally murdered and Gus Grissom, I'm circling right here, was actually a whistleblower and they killed him in an accident. We'll get to that later, but we won't count that one for manned missions because uh, these uh, three astronauts actually never even blasted off into low Earth orbit on an, on an official Apollo mission. So Apollo 7, uh, that was uh, a manned mission in a low Earth orbit. You have Apollo 8. This one is the one we believe is the first one they had to fake because as uh, viewers may know by now, what our group believes is that uh, the uh, Apollo missions uh, couldn't be achieved because once you get beyond low Earth orbit, which is about a couple hundred miles above the Earth, so for example, the International Space Station is in low Earth orbit, it's a little over 200 miles above the Earth, and uh, which is really not that far, right? That's the distance between Boston and New York maybe, right? So when you get up that high, you can fall in circles around the Earth. Uh, but the moon, and this is an alleged photo taken from uh, the Apollo 8, uh, you know, a command module uh, of the lunar surface in orbit from Earth. By the way, this is uh, the photograph that is shown on uh, the White House in the phone call uh, between Nixon and the Apollo 11 astronauts. So a lot of uh, people like to spread this bad evidence, and there is bad evidence out there of the Apollo missions being faked, and they say, well, how did Nixon get a photograph of them on the moon while he's talking to them on the moon? That must be, you know, uh, fake because, well, the, the answer to that, of course, is the photo in the background of the Nixon photograph where he's ostensibly on the phone talking to the astronauts on the moon. That's of Apollo 8. That was prior to 
Apollo 11. So when people talk about Apollo 11, they, they always think, or talk about Apollo, excuse me, they always think of Apollo 11 like that was the first mission. Now, there were a number of Apollo missions. Some of them were fraudulent, some of them were not fraudulent. The ones in low Earth orbit are likely not fraudulent because it's possible to do this, right? So this photo here of Apollo 7 is likely a genuine photograph. Uh, the problem is, once you get beyond low Earth orbit, you have uh, a magnetic field around the Earth that traps radiation. So the reason why we can survive on planet Earth is not just because we have oxygen, not just because we have air pressure, which was, allows the blood in our veins to stay uh, a liquid, uh, but it's also we're protected from the radiation of deep space, meaning exploding stars. So the universe is very vast, perhaps infinite, who knows, but there are exploding stars all throughout the universe that uh, spread galactic cosmic rays that run through our solar system and are trapped in the magnetosphere. Now the magnetic sphere comes from an iron core uh, trapped or in the center of the earth that projects this magnetic field around the earth. The magnetic field goes uh, for thousands of miles up traps all the radiation that we would get from the galactic cosmic rays and the solar flares that would otherwise kill us, right? Because this radiation would kill human beings. And that's why, <clears throat> when you think about it, why has no um, astronaut other than the Apollo ones and the Apollo record, uh, which would only be 8, 10, and then 11 through 17, those are the only missions where men are alleged, uh, which would be 1968 through 1972, by the way, are alleged to have gone beyond low Earth orbit, right? So for any time after 1972 to 2022, no human being has gone above about 400 miles uh, up in the uh, Earth, right? Um, the uh, only missions to have gone the 240,000 mile mission to the moon have been the Apollo ones. Now, when I say gone to the moon, I mean with human beings, right? Because you can send robotic probes, the ro robotic probes can go out as far as you want, right? But the issue is the flesh and blood of the human beings. Uh, that flesh and blood uh, will be destroyed by the radiation once we get outside the protective shield from the magne magnetic sphere, the iron core of the earth uh, protecting human beings, right? So Apollo 7, let's count them. Apollo 8, that was a manned mission. Apollo 9, that was another one. Now Apollo 9 was only in earth orbit. So this one, you know, I guess could be possible. I don't know for sure if Apollo 9 was faked or not. We know Apollo 8 was faked because, and this could be a robotic probe uh, taking an image uh, from the moon to the earth, who knows, or maybe they faked this image in a studio. I won't pretend to know the answer to that. I just know that the manned missions uh, are fake, okay? And we can prove that countless different ways, reference my other live streams if you want the evidence. It's pretty uh, strong, there's smoking guns everywhere that the manned missions alleging to have landed men on the moon are fraudulent, right? Let's count, we got Apollo 9, then we got Apollo 10. Uh, this is another mission alleged to have uh, orbited the moon with human beings in it. And Apollo 11, this is the most famous one. And then Apollo 12, right? Well, the problem is, as I've referenced, this technical document states that the contamination of the windows was only a problem for the first three Apollo missions. And they say all the other missions, this was not a problem, right? Well, apparently it is a problem because the official record uh, evidences that it is, right? You have at least two windows with this uh, quote unquote outgassing or whatever we wanna call it of liquid that might be in between the window panes caught here, right? Uh, the official record says this wasn't a problem. And uh, so 
the evidence or if you want to make the claim that this is water trapped in between the window panes and maybe they looked at the other windows and took these crystal clear photos out of the other windows and then they had two that got water trapped in them. Well, if that's true, then why does the 1972 Apollo record um, report the technical schematic I just showed you, which you can get on NASA's uh, website, why does that say that um, this was only an issue for the first three missions, they corrected the record, or they corrected, obviously they corrected the record, they correct that all the time in the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, they just make stuff up uh, as a living document and insert text whenever they damn well please, but they corrected the uh, command module, the windows for subsequent missions. That's what the official record says, right? And then if you want to say, well, if this is water streaks that are inside the Apollo craft, well, the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal uh, details, you know, all of the Apollo missions and has a description next to each photograph. When you go to Magazine 50 in the Apollo uh, record, it references nothing of uh, any liquid that was spilled inside the craft, right? So we circle back to the question, you know, what are the streaks of water on the window and how can you explain that? Anyway, I thought you guys might find this uh, podcast interesting. I apologize for being a little jerky with this uh, <laughs> in my uh, language and speaking to you on this because I do record these off the cuff. Uh, I don't plan out a script or anything like that. I just talk to you, uh, you know, just my own voice and my own thoughts uh, on the matters. Obviously, I've done an extensive amount of research into this. Uh, I have a blog, stratagemsoftheright.blogspot.com, where I have numerous articles if you want to read something a little more, uh, you know, we'll say uh, organized in thoughts and less kind of off the cuff like this. You can read my blog, and I've got numerous articles on the Apollo photos if you want to go through them. Uh, but anyway, I uh, hope you guys are having a great day, and we'll see you on the next live stream. Take care now. Bye-bye.